that's that. A disappointing 4-1 defeat against Celtic. And I have to say, now that the dust has settled, now that our emotions have calmed down, I'm here to try and understand what the hell went on in last night's defeat. There were pros, there were a lot of cons, but I think for me, outside of that, there are more question marks, if anything. And I feel like that is what's giving me a bit of concern at the moment, because I was really hoping that this preseason in particular would be the most optimized preseason we've seen in a long time. But obviously with the you know, distractions of international tournaments where we're losing access to our best players who haven't had enough time yet working under Maresca. You look at your Palmers, your Enzos, your Caicedos, your Conor Gallagher's, you know, players, Kukureas. This is like half your first 11 that he doesn't have access to right now. On top of that, we still haven't finalized all our business in the transfer window. We're still set to add to the team. Outside of Jorgensen, we don't know who these other players are set to be yet. And already it feels like is time running out against us because equally we're not silly we know that pre-seasons don't forever determine the fate of what a team season is set to look like but we can't also dismiss the fact that if there are some consistent negative patterns in pre-season they do tend to spill over once a new season does start and we've seen that time and time again in seasons where we haven't prospered our pre-seasons have tended to be pretty awful. I still think it's way too early right now to really determine what path we're on, but it's quite clear that fitness is a key concern right now because there isn't enough fit players in the team and this was seen in particular with our shape off the ball or any times we don't have the ball, but I'll discuss the tactical stuff later on. But one thing that was kind of interesting and intriguing to me was in the post-match interview afterwards where Maresca discussed Robert Sanchez and he said that he was encouraging Sanchez in that game to actually play long balls to try and find solutions against the man-marking press set by Celtic. Now, Maresca revealed that in that game, they didn't actually work upon that in the training sessions. This was a decision made tactically because the team needed to try and find that solution in the game and that's why Sanchez probably played a lot longer than he probably may play throughout the entirety of the season but the thing that Maresca said was that at the moment we are trying so many things we just don't have enough time to try everything we just started 15 or 20 days ago I think that's a very fair comment but then on top of that I then think to myself we're now playing like a game every three days we got club america we got madrid you know we got some big games coming up is there a lot of time to really optimize everything we're seeing in game when maybe your training sessions won't be as perfect who knows on one hand i think this is uh, something to brace ourselves for and the fact that a lot of these games won't be showing what the team's really really about i think we're gonna actually have to wait until like the first few games of the new season to really see that because as I said, things just aren't as optimized for Maresca at this point in time. But then equally, there is some pressure against Maresca now because let's say hypothetically the next two games still don't work in our favor and we're still not seeing much of anything. Is he going to start to problem solve? Is he going to start to maybe adapt and tweak to the demands of the new squad he is working with? As I said at the start of this video, I'm still left with a lot of question marks, you know. Are we going to start to see the benefits of using this inverted style fullback? Maybe in the meantime, we have to because we don't have most of our midfield in the team. I think that's quite obvious. Let's see Andre Santos won't be here for next season. We're waiting for our three big guys in corner, you know, uh, Enzo and Moises to come back and start playing in the system. And I think the biggest thing is seeing more improvements now in the structure of the ball because without that, everything we're doing would be an absolute waste of time because that is like the glue that holds teams together now. That is what I'm curious to see. Now, you guys know my thoughts. I'm open to seeing what happens with Maresca. He wasn't necessarily my first choice, but I don't have any like ill wills or anything like that. Was the positional play route the direction I would have personally taken us in? Probably not. You know, I was thinking, you know what, with what Pochettino did, for the state where the team is currently at, maybe it would have made more sense for Pochettino to work one more season with them before deciding maybe if you want to get a new manager or whatever. At least there's some continuity that you're carrying forward from last season into the new season, right? So the fact that we're now kind of flipping the script again, reversing everything we've done and like rebuilding the blueprint, that does come with its difficulties where you have to kind of relearn the whole script again in as quick amount of time as possible. And at the moment, it seems like Maresca will need a lot of time to work with the squad because I think if there's one 
key problematic thing that I've seen in yesterday's performance is the fact that once things go against us, the players kind of lose faith in what they're doing and they start to force the play. Now, this was something that I've seen many, many times under different teams and different managers, you know, especially a lot last season. After a nice 10 minute start to the game where we looked bright, a bit energetic and we're forcing things with some like decent half chances moments, you know, Celtic started to settle into the game. And I think the first thing we noticed tactically was that their man pressing structure, it was causing some issues in terms of the team's understanding of how to play through that and how to navigate that. With what Maresca said post-match of not having enough time to do everything right now, the question will be how much time will be needed. Fingers crossed we see these improvements over the next two games, especially against Club America. But I think the number one thing that must be tackled now is just the fitness. How much fitness can we build in that amount of time? because the team isn't fit right now to play a full 90 minutes. Yes, Mares could use the full players who played 90 minute games. And from the lineup, you can see that, okay, there's maybe this uh, early indication of who the key players are set to be, right? You're looking at Gyu playing up front at the moment and Kun Kun behind us at 10. Cool, that makes sense. Two wingers holding the width. That's what Moresca likes in the system. The midfield probably isn't his ideal one outside of Lavia, but the defense, that could potentially be the, the defense for the start of the season. You know, James on the right, Fofana, Badia, and Levi Cole. Question may be, could Renato Vega somehow find himself in that team? Maybe moving Cole into defense and Vega on the left-hand side? Time will tell. But that defense alongside Robert Sanchez, it seems like that's maybe half the first 11 now that could be the first 11 that would be used consistently throughout most preseason games now. But regardless though, you know, we're still waiting for the heavy hitters to come back and try and make sense of everything that's going on. They're going to be key for us. But equally, it just seems like this squad really is the same as last season's, being told to play a completely different manner. There's been no real upgrade signings made to any position so far. Can we surprise before the window ends at this rate? It's not looking too likely. But outside of fitness, it has to be the off the ball work because that was the most concerning thing. It was too easy for Celtic to play through us. It was too easy for us to panic under certain situations. I think the third goal we conceded very sloppy. I have to say, Robert Sanchez, you're putting Badia Shield under pressure. He's in a negative body position where his only options were either going to be the pass that he attempted or he tries something incredibly risky and does like a turn to go to the opposite direction which is a lot harder to pull off he should have just cleared that ball yeah but already you know players aren't showing that they're understanding how to problem solve in particular moments i wonder how much time and connections that's going to take for us to see things like that but that alongside the pressing structure if you guys watch my five things Bresca must decide and realize the press defensive structure is one of the key ones because I said Leicester City conceded quite a few goals in the second half of the season in the particular manners that we saw in that Celtic game. That has to improve. Now, there are going to be some difficult questions because Maresca had to use a KDH up front with his energy and he had to use an Ndidi as an eight to help maintain the pressing structure because that's key. There's no point having nice players, sexy players, whatever, if these guys can't defend or apply that pressure off the ball. When you have players like Moises and Gallagher and Corey, can you afford to leave them out your teams when your team at the moment is showing signs that they need that profile to help balance out what's going on? There's a lot of questions and a lot of problems for Maresca to still solve. And it's a shame that he hasn't necessarily got the perfect score to work with right now with everyone back that he wants to really like maximize this use of time. And it took a lot of work last season from Pochettino, lots of repetitions, lots of running, you know, lots of being into these guys' heads that this part of the game must be improved upon. And the moment we start to show glimpses of this near the end of the season, of course, it kind of felt like it was for nothing because we've now gone back to the drawing boards. And then I'd say defence, of course, wasn't particularly amazing. It felt like the lack of communication relationships was definitely on show. Like the distances were way too wide, too many times, not enough communication out from the back. And it just felt like they just weren't in tandem as a unit at all. They didn't know when to like compact their spaces and stay more central. They weren't really controlling the team. I think Maresca made a point post-match where he said, when we aren't able to apply the pressure on the ball, this is the moment for the team to drop their lines 
and hold and keep their shape. I think one thing with the defense though, it seemed like it became more of like a classic back four. And when like your Wesley's move at right back and then when Cole will play at left back, it seemed like the gaps and spaces in defense grew even bigger. I think that's why the communication got worse. Now last season, Pochettino realized to really play this way, maximum effort was needed from the wingers down each flank to put in that work to drag back to double up and triple up with the players on their side. So far, we aren't seeing that same type of energy. We aren't seeing that same type of aggression from the wingers at the moment, tracking back, doing their jobs. And that's a little bit concerning for me because as you're seeing in certain clips of like Mudrik or Madweke, they weren't doing what they had to do to actually bring that defensive structure. And if they did that, then your Wesleys and your Core Wolves wouldn't have to move so wide and then the structure wouldn't have to collapse so much defensively. So. You know, there's a lot that needs to be worked upon. It's actually a bit mad when you actually deep everything going on right now. Now to end things, I'll discuss some of the player performances. Uh, I think Mark Gu looks lively and energetic. Um, listen, I think, you know, he's 18. He has potential clearly. We'll still see that as preseason goes on, but I'm not gonna like gas and cap where, this is the thing I see now where it's like, if everything else is going bad, but someone is just like not as bad as everyone else, their performance gets gas to the heavens. No, he's still not showing that he's able to get the shots off quickly enough. That will come, but he's getting himself in nice areas. He's showing his press resistance. He's showing that strength he has. And with what Maresk is saying, it seems like he is set to remain with the first team squad for this season. So it's a big opportunity for you. Let's see how he does. But he did look lively and hopefully he gets his goal for confidence now during this preseason. Outside of that though, you know, in Kunku, of course, not maybe as involved, but again, it's all about the quality he shows in those few moments. Goalkeeper Sanchez, I wasn't impressed with in the game yesterday. No surprise, Jorgensen's coming in. Let's see what he does, but then equally, I'd have a lot more confidence if he were signing an upgrade keeper, and not like another unknown quantity that doesn't have that much big flight experience yet. Let's see how he performs. Yes, Renato Vega came on and to be honest, it was a 10 minute cameo. There wasn't really much to really say. If I say it was great, I'd be capping. I'd be gassed. I'd just be, you know, talking from what I'm hoping he can be like. I'm not discussing reality. Let's see if he starts the next game against Club America. Hopefully he does. Hopefully he can build his fitness even more. I thought Raheem Sterling added a little bit of a tiny edge when he came on. Again, this is a massive season for Sterling to step the hell up now. Now that he's playing in a system that he's had a lot of years playing under, this is a moment for him to shine. I think this is why maybe it will take some time for the team to get used to this way of playing. There seems to be some optimism though, based on what Adara Bio was saying afterwards. Listen, you know, the players feel confident in the system we feel like it suits all of us and if they have that type of energy hopefully it's not just gas for media but it's because behind the scenes you know there is a lot of promise that's going on and hopefully we'll start to see dreads of this promise now as pre-season continues so we wait for the first of august now to see what we do against club america we need to see a reaction now we have to see something because and my friends that note that is the review of our four one defeats against celtic share your thoughts and opinions get involved in the conversation and let me know how you're feeling about how pre-season is going are you still hopeful or are you feeling a bit wary right now let us know how you feel so i'm the fc the sisbury lines cv see you all soon cool